All right, buddy, we should be recording now. Uh, let's see what we get here. All right, off to the races. Our scenario here is pretty basic. Uh, I'm going to jump into an F-14B already in flight. Uh, he's about, oh, son of a bitch. See, that's that's what happens when you do this when you've been drinking. All right, I'm going to jump into an F-14B already in flight. Uh, about 50, 60 miles off these bandits. And we're going to talk about uh, how little you really need to use Jester uh, to employ Phoenixes. <clears throat> Here we go. And I do have a mixed loadout on. I'm going to drop it back with the polish real quick. Right. I do have a mixed loadout on. Uh, loud shit. God. Oh, I got the nails on a nose. 12 o'clock. Thank you, Jester. Uh, sparrows and Phoenixes. And in we go. All right, coming off active pause, we're going to do a couple. Actually, I'll tell you what, I'm going to configure the aircraft uh, from active pause. So let me drop back in it. Okay, so we're going to do um, three things real quick, uh, and we're going to be in the fight. All right. First, we're going to we're going to configure our aircraft uh, for this encounter. My gun rate, I'm going to turn that up. I'm going to set my master arm on. I'm going to verify that we are in air-to-air -air mode, which we are. Then I'm going to set... There's the uh, bandit, bra, 270, 76 miles. Thanks, Chester. Now I'm going to set my HSD into TID repeater mode. This being my HSD over here between my knees, we're going to kick that one switch down into TID repeater mode. TID repeater mode is now repeating Jester's TID. If we hop in the back seat real quick, we will see Jester is doing the Lord's work in TWS Auto. That's what he will default to when we are uh, in an encounter like this. So what he is doing out there right now is he is finding finding, hooking, and identifying targets. He's IFF this guy as hostile. We can identify that by that little carrot right there, that triangular carrot. That's Jester telling us he's marked him as hostile. Let's get back in the office chair. We see Jester's coming up with our second contact. Okay, good. And he hasn't identified him yet. That's that staple icon. Okay, now it's gone to that uh, inverted Bandit, Chevrolet. Bra, 275, 89 miles. Thanks, Chester. All right. So this homeboy here is about 88 miles out. That means this one's uh, 50%. This one's probably about 60 miles. So we're actually getting pretty close to where we can talk about engaging with our Phoenixes. Uh, speaking of our Phoenixes, where are they? Well, let's go ahead and uh, get over to our phoenixes. Okay, you, you can see on uh, target number one here, actually you saw a couple things happen. Um, you saw numbers appear on the right hand side of these carrots, a one and a two. Jester has prioritized these contacts, um, meaning that when we start letting missiles off the rails, this is the order in which uh, our targeting computer is going to attack them. So when I do my first Fox 3, it's going to dump at our target number 1. When I dump my next one, it's going to dump at target number 2. We can also tell target number 2 is the one that we're getting SA information about because of that highlighted white state. All right, this dude's getting pretty close. So I know you can tell that flashing. Uh, that's actually a shoot cue for the Phoenix. The targeting computer is telling me I can kill this dude. Um, which, you know, I'm at Mach 0.7, I'm at almost 20,000 feet, I'm co-altitude with him, uh, probably uh, 50 miles between us. Let's go ask, let's go ask the magic, the magic map, yeah, just to kind of get an idea. All right, yep. Yeah. Yep, 56 miles between us, okay, all right. Uh, so let's go fight these sons of bitches, shall we? All right, here we go, coming off active pause. Uh, now. Alright. Tally-ho. We're in the fight. Here we go. And, you know, sometimes you wish you'd trimmed out your airplane. This is one of those moments. Alright. He's about a thousand knots closure. 
He's right off our nose and probably about 30 miles out. Uh, I'm going to bring, speaking of my nose, I'm going to let this guy come in a little closer because we're demonstrating using these Phoenixes um, basically as stand-ins for AMRAMs. So uh, I'm not scared. I'm going to let this guy come in a little closer. I'm going to get my altitude back up. Uh, that two on the left side of his carrot tells me he's at about 20,000 feet. So I'm going to go... Boy, I got my aircraft trimmed out wrong. I'm going to go get co-altitude with him. And... We're going to smack him. And I've got shoot cues on both of them now. Uh, so anytime that I want to smoke them, I can. Let's go ahead and get this first one defending. Uh, so, Fox 3... All right, there goes the first Phoenix. All right, I'm going to go active pause again. So we can put our head down in here and actually see what's happening on the pilot's display. All right. So you see that we've got a countdown timer now counting down on the right-hand side of our target track. Uh, that is our time to impact counter. And when that begins to flash, that is our indicator that the missile has gone active. It's uh, this counter on this side. When that begins to flash, that's our indicator the missile's gone active. Uh, and Jester's doing a very good job of keeping these guys in our radar slew. All right, that missile's now gone pit bull. So I'm going to let uh, Phoenix number two off the rails. Fox three. All right. I've now got a missile out on both. Um, let's go see how this first guy does. At five, four, three, two, one. Oh, that's the end of that. Okay, so he's having a very bad day. This other guy, you'll notice uh, a couple of things. First off, uh, he's not flashing, right? We're going to jump in the back seat again. Remember when I said we're in T Twiz Auto, TWS Auto? He is basically soft-locked. He is in a track, uh, track, while, uh, track while scan soft-lock, and he actually doesn't know that this Phoenix is coming for him yet. Oh, man. And our missile has... 75,000 feet and 1,300 knots on it, so it's got a it's got a pretty good chance of paying the bills here, which is nice. Like that, like that a lot. That makes Daddy happy. All right. So I'm going to jump back in the front seat. We're going to watch this from the pilot's perspective. Again, Jester's keeping him uh, nicely bracketed in our radar. Our missile's closing on him. He's 35 miles out. We've got a 1,250 knot closure. Damn, we are smoking. All right, any second now, that missile's going to go pit bull. It hasn't already, which I'm betting that means he beat it. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he beat that one. All right. Yeah, we waited too long to fire. Went stupid. All right, so what does that mean for us now? Well, it means we are um, about 30 miles from this guy. So, you know what we're going to do? You guessed it. We're going to give him the dick again. At almost 1,300 knot closure, here goes Phoenix number two. Uh, and he is... He is... 26 miles and our second Phoenix is out on this guy as it climbs out oh, louder than shit as it climbs out accelerating climbing all right, motor out uh-huh 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 all right head back in the cockpit all right now you notice we've gotten better performance on this missile it's already gone active and we're about to uh, see the gun show. Let's go see how we do. Looking good, looking good, looking good, feeling good, smelling good. Oh, you 
you dirty whore. Wheels on our nose, 12 o'clock. Look at Ivan beat that sucker. Alright. Alright. How far away is he now? I'm gonna do this one more time. Yeah, he's still, he's 17 miles. We're gonna do this again. Alright, I got one more Phoenix. We're gonna let him have it. There it goes. Alright, that's the end of my Phoenixes. Let's do this. Just we're still keeping the radar on him while we kind of move in lateral separation. And you notice the profile of this missile is very different than it was last time. Yeah, there he is out there. See him? Let's see if I can keep him in in our eyeballs. Let's see how this goes. Come on, you dirty cunt. Let's go. Yep, 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 yep. Looking bad for Ivan. Not looking good. Looking bad. Looking bad, Ivan. Oh, splash. Good night. All right. So. Um, you'll notice in all of that, I gave Jester no commands. I did nothing other than, I'm going to reset my steps here so you can see him again. All right. I'm going to reset to cruise here. This is the sum total of the steps I undertook in flight, in cruise, I'm on cap, or I'm in air to air mode, and whatever it may be, right? But ostensibly, I'm in cruise, I'm on patrol, Jester's riding in my back seat, I'm in the front seat doing pilot shit, and I'm going to take about three basic steps to put the aircraft into a configuration where Jester is setting up all my Phoenix shots for me. So we're going to go master arm on. We're going to go air to air mode enabled. Joker. Thank you, Jester. And we're going to toggle our HSD to TID repeater mode. That is switch position center. And there it is. Uh, and of course, we want to select our phoenixes. We do want to, uh, once we're in this mode, Jester will not start uh, prioritizing uh, IFDF and hooked targets uh, for TWS engagement until we go into phoenixes. At that point, Jester will then begin to prioritize the contacts he's tracking um, and set them up for a TWS engagement, uh, which is basically two guys working the airplane. One of them's an AI um, approximating how your AMRAMs will function uh, in other engagements. Um, with, of course, the added benefit that when one of these uh, giant phoenixes smacks a fighter-sized aircraft, you uh, you don't generally get a parachute. You know, you get, you get, uh, well, you know, maximum disrespect, right? All right. That's what we got for now, man. That's how that works. Later. Maybe. Hmm. Okay.